So let's take a look at three examples where we have to solve for a variable other than the one that is currently being solved for. There are a bunch of different ways this can be um, asked for in words and directions. Um, solving for a variable, isolate the variable, manipulate the literal equation. Essentially, what you'll have is something with all letters or maybe the occasional number and you'll have one of the letters off by itself, and you're asked to get a different letter by itself. So you, some of these you might recognize, others maybe not. I have four here, and we might do a couple of different things with them. So this first one I have should be familiar. Familiar, excuse me. Distance equals rate times time. All right, so this has distance being the only thing um, by itself. So if I wanted you to solve for rate, to get r by itself, that means I need to be, have r on one side, and more importantly, the other side can have no r's in it either. So what would we do to move, well, to get the r by itself? And it doesn't matter which side, because we can always just flip them. So right now, right, the r and the t are together. So I need to break that bond. And the way I get the t away is I would, right, divide the right side by t, so I can cancel these guys. But we all know, right, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So then I would divide the other side by t as well. So on the right side, what I have on the right, my t's cancel. I have the r all by itself. And on the left side, I have d over t. No r's in that. So I have done what I needed to do. The r's by itself, and the other side doesn't have an r in it. So now if I come over to my next example, a equals p plus p times r times t. So let's go ahead and we'll do this a couple of different ways. Let's first solve it for t. Let's think about what we'd do to solve that for t. Okay. So here's the only t I have. Everything else has to move. So think about the order you want to do that. It's not, not saying there's only one right way, but there's certainly an easiest way. So the easiest way is to isolate the term, if there, since there's only one, right, let me check, I only have one term with a T in it. I'm going to isolate the term with that letter in it. That means this term has to move, so I'll subtract P from both sides. Okay. And then, right, right now my T is being harassed by this PR. Everybody's multiplying, so if I want to get rid of the PR, I would divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by PR. There they go, canceling on the right. T's by itself. Left side, not a T left in it. A minus P divided by P times R. Okay, so that's how we could solve this equation here that deals with compounding interest for t, for time. Let's take a look at it again, and this time I want to do something a little bit trickier. How would we solve that for, do a little squiggle down here so I can keep it separate, how would we solve that for p? Because now I have two terms with the p in it. Now they're both on the same side, so that's great. I don't have to do anything about that. But it would be nice if I just had one p over there. So maybe you're thinking, well, just add them together then. Well, OK, except we can't because they're not like. Remember, we can only add and subtract things if they're exactly the same. This is a p. This is a p times some other stuff. They don't add. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to factor. Everybody has a p to give, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. p out of p leaves behind 1. P out of PRT leaves behind RT. Right, that all equals A. So now I have A equals P times all of this. P times the quantity, 1 plus RT. So I can move the 1 plus RT. OK, I'm totally going to cheat because I'm running out of room. Both equations, I'm just drawing my division line for both sides because I just ran out of room. 1 plus RT. So what happens on the right is it's going to cancel. I get my p all by itself. And on the left, I get a over 1 plus r t. p, just one of them. No p's over here. That's what it looks like when we solve for p. 
Okay, so I have two more examples. So this R equation, you will see this particular one, because it's a nice one to put in here. Let me grab a different color. It has to do with adding resistors. Okay. It's kind of like a net resistance question. So 1 over big R, the net resistance, equals 1 over little r sub 1 plus little r sub 2. So let's go ahead and solve for big R. And it is not, I, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be lovely if we could just flip everybody? But it doesn't work that way. Now, it will work if you had just one fraction on the right-hand side, okay, but it doesn't work if there are two separate separated by a plus. And okay, you can prove it to yourself. Take some numbers that you know, maybe like 1 half plus 1 third. Okay. So you know that that is not, in fact, 1 fifth. So, right, we can't just flip everybody. So instead, we need to somehow, so we're going to solve for big R. I'm just going to make a note to myself so I remember where I'm headed. I have a bunch of fractions. It would be nice if I didn't. So what was our strategy if I have an equation that has fractions in it that I don't want anymore? Exactly. I multiply both sides of my equation by the common denominator. In this one, I just take all three letters, big R, little r sub 1, little r sub 2. And I'm just going to multiply. So multiplying distributes, so it just multiplies each term. And what happens then, as that LCD multiplies, is I get to cancel all of my denominators. And then we'll just look at what I have left. Cancel my r sub 1's on that, so I have 1 times big R times little r2. My last term, the R2s will cancel, and I have 1 times big R times little r1. Okay. And I wanted to solve for big R. So there is a big R and there is a big R. I have two terms. They're on the same side, which is great. So once we get there, we factor out the big R. And I'm almost there. I think I'm going to fit it here. I'm not going to be able to write it, but you can follow. Uh, give myself just a little bit more room. Right in here, it's going to fit. Solving for big R, how would we get who was ever harassing it? Like that set of parentheses? Exactly, we would divide. Big R equals R1 times R2 divided by R1. I'm going to switch the order just so it looks nicer. Plus R2. OK? All right, last example. I've left myself a lot of room, so let's see what we can do. What letter should we solve for? Hmm, should we solve for B? So this is a work rate problem, in case you don't recognize it. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, you will eventually. So we're going to solve that equation for B. Again, I have fractions. I need to get rid of them. So we're going to multiply everybody by the LCD. A, B. AB, remember to multiply the right side of the equation by AB. Right, both sides get multiplied by it. Left side it distributes, because that's what we do. Cancel your A's on the first one, so I have T times B. Plus, cancel your B's in the second one, T times A, equals 1 times, I have nothing to cancel, so I just get A times B. Okay. We are going to, right, I asked you to solve for B. So now find all the b's. Okay. There's one, and there's one. So I have two terms. I need to get those two terms together on the same side so I can factor out the b. So it doesn't really matter which side, although if I move this one over, then I have to move the ta over to the other side. So it, it, it's easiest to take this tb and move it over. It's positive here, so to move it, I subtract it from both sides. So t times a equals a times b, right, subtract it, minus t times b. Both terms with a b in it are together, so we go ahead and factor out the b. Leaves behind an a minus t. And last step to solve for the b, okay, I have room so I can write in this last step this time. Divide both sides by a minus t. B is all by itself, yay, all the way over here, guys. B equals, and I have T times A, over A minus T. 
Oh, somebody's thinking it. Yes, you could write that A times T on the top, right? Multiplication doesn't matter. Can't switch the bottom without doing something else, so we won't talk about that. All right, good luck.